Hello everyone, good afternoon, bonsoir. Thank you very much for being with us today. It is my pleasure to officially welcome you to this presentation, official editorial presentation of Repoc de Francophone 3. And we have some amazing presenters today. Uh, we have Cherry Michki, who has been working with Clatworld Languages for almost five years as a writer, editor, and pedagogical consultant. And she, of course, also taught French for 15 years and worked in editorial publishing for over 25 years. We also have Priscilla Blanton, who is an instructional specialist serving FLES and Lotte K-12 teachers in Arlington, ISD in Texas. She's also a former French high school teacher and has also worked many years in educational publishing. And we have Barbara Ciruti, who is the editorial manager K-12 at Clet World Languages, and she will begin the presentation for us today. Thank you very much for being with us here. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Uh, yes, we are very excited and pleased to welcome you all here for the presentation of Reporter um, Francophone. And uh, what are we going to see today? So uh, we'll have, uh, we'll see uh, what the program is like, um, the overview of the program. Then uh, Sherry Mitchke will present a unit in detail. We'll see how a Reporter Francophone deals with grammar in detail. Then uh, Priscilla will show us in detail how uh, the annotated teacher edition works. And Sherry will be back with the workbook. And then I will uh, talk a little bit about the learning platform, uh, the KWL Hub. And then it will be your turn, your turn with your questions. So next slide, please. Let's have a look at the program overview. So Reporter Francophone is proficiency-based. It's four-level French program for middle and high school. It's communicative and it is based on project world and um, uh, the, the instruction is based on uh, authentic, engaging content and aligned with actual work readiness standards. Next, please. So we are uh, published, we just published level three uh, and level four is due next year. We are already working on it and um, Level one has also a split edition, 1A, 1B for who are for schools that need it. Next, please. The concept of Reporter Francophone. <clears throat> so it's based on Reporter, as the title says, on young people who um, take the role of cultural ambassadors of their country uh, with their accents. And um, they have this role of reporter uh, in the unit presenting their country and the unit theme in a video, chatting to, with each other and writing in them on the magazine pages. For level three, um, the represented um, regions or countries are, we have Paris, we have Tahiti, uh, French Polynesia, we have uh, Tunis and um, Côte d'Ivoire, we have Quebec again, and we have Provence in France. Next, please. Reporter Francophone is proficiency based. What does this mean in detail? Uh, the instruction is based on authentic materials and comprehensible input. Uh, tasks are real, real world tasks. 
the grammar is taught and practiced in context. We'll see that later. Uh, grammar and vocabulary is consistently recycled uh, all through the program. Uh, it's project-based, aligned with ACTFL and state standards, and it combines formative and summative assessment. Next, please. Components. Next, please. Um, so we have um, for each level the student edition consisting of six units plus a pre preliminary unit, the workbook, always print and digital, also six units and a preliminary unit, the annotated teacher's edition in print and digital, and the digital version uh, with the assessment pro program and plenty of um, supplementary materials on the Cladford Languages Hub. Next, please. What sets uh, this program apart? Um, it's a well-defined logic model based on rigorous research as confirmed by an analysis conducted by Johns Hopkins University School of Education. The, the authentic materials that are used are carefully created and have um, are um, accompanied by um, scaffolded activities. Um, language structures are approached in a flexible, flexible, flexible way. We'll see that later. It was created by teachers for teachers and our Cladware Languages team as at your service if you need support for implementing the, um, the program. Next, please. Sherry, now it's your turn. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to walk you through what is a, a typical unit of the student edition. Um, so, uh, next slide, please. So, First of all, each unit consists of two leçons. Um, so here we have the first part. Um, you know, have a, underneath the title and the unit number, you always have a central question. So there are two of them, one for each leçon. Up here in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a brief description of the two mini projets, again, one per lesson, and the projet final, which is at the end of the unit. Um, the unit always kicks off with an introductory video that features the reporter for that unit. He introduces himself or she introduces herself, talks about the location, where he or she is from, and introduces the topic of the unit. On the right, you'll see there are maps. Um, you'll see there are there's more information, trivial information, just fun facts kind of things, and also some brainstorming questions for students to start thinking about the topic and the location. And finally, in the bottom right, there are all these activities based on the video to get started in the unit. Next slide, please. After that, there is a, for each lesson, there is an introductory page as well. So this is a typical example. It provides an overview of what's going to happen when the students are going to learn in the lesson. Um, you'll see these three columns. They always start off in the same way. So in this unit, will is followed by the communicative goals for the lesson. By using, this is the vocabulary and grammar that students will learn and practice. And then the third column is, and you will find out about, uh, and this covers the cultural topics that they will learn about in the unit. On the left, you will always see an authentic resource that relates to the location of the topic of the lesson well, and the topic. On the right, you'll see a chat feature. And there, there's always this chat between the reporter of the location with one or more of the other reporter from the other units. They always relate in some way to the authentic resource on the left. So for example, here we have a poster for a movie about a family and family is one of the main themes of this lesson. And so in the chat, the two reporter discuss the film. Finally, on the right, I wanted to point out this structural feature. It highlights a specific aspect of the culture related to the lesson, and these are throughout the book. Um, and there's always one of the a question at the end where that's 
features one of the targets one of the five C's. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is a, another typical feature. You'll you'll see that um, each these two page spreads. There are five of them. Usually, there's two or three per leçon, and five throughout each unit. But they're self-contained. So um, that is the students. Everything they need to do the activities is there on the page. So not, not a lot of flipping back and forth. Um, so here we have um, the title, very descriptive title, kind of uh, sets a context. And then the learning goals. And the learning goals are stated as can-do statements. It's very important. Also, the activity types are called out here in the red type. So we have, for example, lire et écrire. So the, the skills that students will be practicing are called out very clearly. So the activities, you'll see, focus on the various modes of communication. And then grammar and vocabulary are at point of use. They're on the side. This is intentional because they're not the main focus while they're doing the communicative activities. But um, they will revisit these later in the unit. And we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. A couple more features to point out are the text recordings. All the texts are recorded and um, the students can hear them. Look for the speaker outlines and uh, me, the speaker icons. And uh, also if you hear, see a label, this is uh, or something that would also be uh, an indication that there's a recording. And finally, we have sample answer answers. You'll see down here at the bottom, they're in blue. And uh, so you see those for many of the activities throughout each lesson. Next slide, please. So on this slide, this is a different two page spread. Um, but I want to point out here is uh, the feature J'observe la langue. Um, and uh, Barbara was gonna talk a little bit more about that later on, but these are throughout the program. Uh, these activities prompt students to draw conclusions about the language based on reasoning and observation, often their comparisons with English, but they, they do this, they learn inductively rather than receiving information passively through direct instruction. Um, there are also many audio activities. So again, look for the speaker icons and the écoute labels. And then the feature right below that, activity seven is a jeu. We have a lot of games that are engaging and encourage students to have fun while they're learning French. Next slide, please. Here is another uh, two-page spread. This one is uh, talking about, we, we want to talk about here are the lexique features and the grammar features. So you'll see that they're color-coded. All of the, the lexique or vocabulary features are in magenta. And um, you'll see at the bottom, they, they have, I don't know how to see on this slide, but they always have a page reference to the more in-depth feature that is later on in the lesson. But again, it's at point of use have to, to provide what students need to do for the activities. Uh, similarly, the grammar features, they're color-coded in teal. They present the targeted grammar structures that they need, again, to do the activities on the page. Uh, and there are page references to the more in-depth grammar presentations and practice activities later on in lesson. Um, up at the top, you'll see a reference to the workbook. So there's always a, a page reference there telling students where they can find the additional practice that corresponds to this particular two page spread. Um, and finally, the rappel feature. This is uh, where you have a concept that is revisited or recycled, which we do frequently to revisit the grammar and vocabulary concepts um, as we can throughout. Next slide, please. Okay, here's another example of a two page spread. Um, what I'm gonna point out here is the progression of the activities. Here you'll have previewing, viewing, and post viewing activities if it's a video. Um, they, activities transition from simple to complex. They focus on interpretation before having students work on interpersonal or present, presentational still, skills. So it just happens to be that it's a video in this case. Um, other places, it might be a text, it could be an audio recording, uh, but they're very often authentic materials. Um, the important thing that I really wanted to, to point out about the program in general is that there are so many authentic resources that we provide. 
it's really one of the major strengths of the program. So they're providing comprehensible input and saving you hours of time searching for authentic resources and creating activities around them. We've already done that for you. Um, here you'll see these also this gray strategy boxes. Um, there are tips for performing the activities. They're throughout each lesson. And the Diffie activities there on the bottom on the right side, these are just more challenging activities for students. Next slide, please. Here is an example of a feature called Le Magazine des Reporters. This is an article presented by, presumably written by, the uh, reporter for that unit. It's about a cultural topic related to where he or she lives and, uh, and the theme of the unit. Um, they import, impart a lot of cultural information about the topic and the location. Um, they're followed by interpretive reading activities, comprehension activities, and then they end with a presentation writing activity where students are invited to write their own articles, often based on research. So you see the little computer icon there. So uh, students themselves uh, become the reporter. Next slide, please. Here is a grammar feature. This is the more in-depth one, the ones that have, when you see the page references in the boxes and in the little sidebars, they refer to these pages. So here we see the explanations, they're very clear. They have a lot of examples, translations in English, so they can, you can do a comparison side by side for how certain structures are similar or different um, from English. Um, they use, there's a lot of color the significant to highlight what's important. Um, boldface also points out what's particularly rem uh, remarkable about a particular feature or a concept. Um, and then the activities. Again, these are not isolated, just drill activities in, in, to practice a grammar structure. They are contextualized. They relate to the topic and of the unit and the lesson, and they use the vocabulary and the structures, obviously. Um, as they work through the progression. And you can you also notice that they go from, they're sequenced so that you go from closed-ended to more open-ended in uh, communicative activities toward the end. Um, so also you will see there are grammar tutor tutorial videos. There's a reference to that at the top of the page. So students can have more uh, instruction on the grammar topics through those videos. Um, and that's it, next, next slide, please. Here is a typical lexic feature that is found toward the end of the, the lesson. This is where all the different lexic boxes are brought together and uh, explained a little bit more in depth. Uh, there's a lot of use of color and um, different features, their organization, they're kind of graphically organized to group topics together thematically. Um, there are also vocabulary presentations. The vocabulary is recorded. Um, sometimes you'll see a game, or often you will see a game. Um, and then you'll have this feature, uh, Mon Lexique. And Mon Lexique is a, an activity that helps students create uh, and add to, create their own personalized vocabulary and, and build the vocabulary that they could use in their own lives. Next slide, please. Okay, des lettres et des sons. This is our uh, pronunciation feature. It contains an explanation, very simple, uh, always an example. Um, and then there are um, the also pronunciation tutorial videos that will also explain again um, and then have additional practice. So um, this is a feature that is only in levels one and level two, levels one and two. Next slide, please. So here is where level three differs. So since we no longer have uh, these lettres et des sons, um, we have um, these other features. We have a more cumulative activity. This one is écrire et parler. It's a group activity although it could also be um, 
uh, in a personal group uh, with just a couple of people, or it could be group, it could be spoken, it could be written, it could be both. And also you'll see here on the right, the Mulexic activity is much more complex than you would see in the levels one and two. Next slide, please. Here we have an example of one of the mini projets. Um, it's at the end of each lesson, you'll have one of these and it always contains step-by-step -step directions. And you'll have an example of what the student product might look like. And then um, it's also an opportunity to revisit the essential question for this lesson. So it's always presented again after the students have worked through the whole lesson. Next slide, please. Here we have an example of projet final. And this is very similar to the mini projet, but more complex. It includes, again, step-by-step -step instructions, an example of the final product, but you'll also find these how-to boxes up in the top in, on the right in, in gray. These are more elaborate strategies and tips for carrying out the project and completing all the tasks. Next slide, please. And finally, at the end of each unit, you will find a practice IPA, je prépare l'évaluation IPA. And um, here you, we always practice the three modes of communication, interpretive, interpersonal presentation, obviously. They are based on authentic documents or other media. So for example, here, this one is a video. Um, there are also assessment rubrics that are made available and Barbara's gonna talk a little bit more about the rubrics later. And you will see here also in the teal and in the magenta, those are the page references back to the vocabulary or grammar features where students might wanna check again, refer back to um, if they need to need any help in doing the activities. Um, and finally, you'll see there are multiple strategies on this page that will help them They're target this, those particular tasks um, to help the students to do that as well and be successfully perform the activities. That's all. And so I'll pass it back to Barbara to talk about grammar. Yeah, thank you very much, Sherry. That was a wonderful walkthrough. Uh, yes. Um, what, how does Reporter Francophone deal with grammar? Um, what, um, what we see here, for example, as an example, is a two page spread of level three. And it deals with this uh, series, uh, with this very famous uh, series, Les Bracelets Rouges. And um, here uh, the characters are presented in text. So it's um, the can, can, uh, can, um, can do a description is I can describe fictional characters and their relationships. So um, what do we start with? We have a text and we start with interpretive reading. Um, and we ask um, students to just deal with the text, see what they find out, um, make a list of common uh, points and differences of the characters. And they have on the right hand side, the um, lexic feature where they can have a look if they need uh, vocabulary and um, and uh, then you uh, we ask them to deal with um, the grammar so we ask them uh, you can see here j'observe la langue Marie maybe you could show it exactly no before yeah maybe it could be yeah it's here exactly so um, here we ask them, yeah, you can go to the next slide maybe. So we can, we ask them really to have a very close look at the language that is used in the article, where it's also bold-faced. The verbs are bold-faced that are dealt with the reciprocal verbs. And here we ask them just to find out uh, the two cases in which reciprocal verbs can be used. And they have to find out, let's see, the, the rule. And um, on the right, they simply have um, 
sort of uh, the just-in-time grammar feature uh, with a list of what they need for this activity, um, all the activities on the page without um, a lot of explanations. Just look, this is what we're dealing with. This is what you need for these activities. So here in um, activity E, we ask them to go back to the article and to see, um, to have a close look at the verbs and to see to which characters they refer. So if you go back, Mache, sorry, thank you. You can see that um, the elements we focus on, the language we focus on are bold-faced so that they really, I mean, this is really grammar in context. And um, this is what, uh, the way we suggest working with grammar in Reporter Francophone, but uh, next, please. Thank you. So after that, um, at the, uh, uh, after the, uh, the lessons, we have the grammar section, grammar section, where we deal with reciprocal verbs in a thorough way, where well, we always have this uh, title, what are they? We have a description of these grammatical <clears throat> elements, what they're, they're used for. Then we have examples. Um, uh, they're highlighted as Sherry already point, pointed out. Uh, the important elements are highlighted with the, just, um, the, the translation, uh, language comparison. And then we have the activities that go from simple to complex, from closed-ended to open-ended activities. So here, uh, we, we they go through 13, 14, 15, and then activity 16, they have, they are asked to do um, an interpersonal um, speaking using this grammar structure. Again, in context, always in the context of uh, the unit, the way it was presented. Next, please. So <clears throat> this doesn't mean that you have to deal <clears throat> with grammar the way, <clears throat> sorry, it is proposed here. Next, please. You can deal with grammar the way we, and vocabulary with language structures in general, the way we presented it here, which would be option A. So it's communicative, it's presented in context first, um, the students do the activity, and then while doing the activity, they discover the vocabulary, uh, they deal with the grammar features, they discover the grammar features themselves, and then they can go over to the in-depth grammar explanations and practice, and practice them. And option B could be also uh, start with grammar and vocabulary first, and then do the communicative activities. Um, this textbook is yours, so of course you can use it either way, the way you like it best. And um, yes, I think this is a very important since the structure uh, we of uh, we we decided to use is a little bit different from uh, other textbooks. Next slide, please. And now it's Priscilla's turn with uh, on the teacher's edition. Thank you, Barbara. I'm excited today to talk to you um, about the annotated teacher's edition. This is just such a rich resource with a lot of information that pulls the program together for you. In your annotated teacher's edition, you'll see that the student edition pages are reduced and there is a wraparound you know, feature, which is just the student editions are wrapped with the wealth of information for you. Um, one of the great things about this program is that it really, the teacher's edition has full of information that will not only help an experienced teacher, but also a new teacher. I know as a former French teacher, I had multiple preps and on Sunday nights, I just, you know, when you're starting to 
plan for, you know, your, the week ahead or, you know, for the grading period ahead. It was nice just to find those quick bits of information that you needed, just great quick ideas and stuff. It's there, but it also has the level of detail and structure to support a newer teacher who needs that. So that's what's great about this teacher's edition. And most of the teacher's edition is this point of use information that is right there where you need it. So um, we're gonna dig in a little more. Could we go to the next slide, please? Awesome, so here's an example of one page of point of use information. And so in this type of wrap, you will find information like content overviews. So you heard more about the features of the student edition, like the reporter introducing the location, um, whether it's a, you know an authentic video source, if it's the lexique, but there's great overviews to give you additional information about the content and how to break it down. There's a wealth of presentation suggestion at all points of the lesson sequence from the beginning of the unit, middle of the unit, end of the unit, when you have your IPA assessment, et cetera, all the presentation suggestions are there to help you design your lesson sequence. Um, of course, there are answers to all the student edition activities um, right there at point of use when you need it. Uh, you will find sprinkled in there ideas for formative assessment. You will find support for your summative assessment, your IPAs, et cetera. Uh, you're gonna find suggestions um, for performance indicators, which will help guide you to make sure that your students are on track in their proficiency development. And you'll also find uh, suggestions and support for the 21st century skills. It could be from communication to media literacy and all those bits and pieces that students need and that you need to design in your instruction. So let's go to the next slide, please. So if you noticed um, in the, when we showed you the previous spread, you probably saw the red boxes at the bottom. One is for differentiated instruction, which I think, of course, everybody knows what differentiated instruction is and how crucial it is for us to do it for our students. Um, we differentiate according to process, product, or content, and or combination thereof. There's also that boost your teaching feature. And the boost your teaching is just a, a great addition bonus um, to the material in that spread. It, it, it's a great suggestion just that works really well with the content on those pages. And so some of the types of suggestions and features that you'll see in those boxes are for auditory learners, kinesthetic learners, visual learners, logical learners, getting all those modes, the modalities. Um, you'll see suggestions for accommodation for students that need that scaffolding. You'll see challenge suggestions for students who need the higher level thinking. Um, you'll find suggestions for interpersonal learners, intrapersonal learners, great gamification suggestions to really help you know we all students are always engaged by games and so there's some great suggestions there there's a lot of content in the student edition but there are ideas for extending the content even further critical thinking suggestions helping to build background knowledge is just a wealth of information for you just to pull everything together and customize the program to how you want to teach it and how you can best serve your students with it and so next slide please so we talked about a lot of that point of use information. Now I'm gonna um, share some of the features that you'll find in the introductory pages of your teacher's edition, as well as the introductory pages um, preceding each unit. So you're gonna find a scope and sequence that is such a valuable tool for all levels of planning, your yearly plan, your grading period plan, your weekly lesson plan, your vertical alignment, your PLCs, the scope and sequence is a great tool for you. You're going to find to help also plan your instruction a unit at a glance that really helps kind of, uh, that helps detail all the different parts and pieces of your unit, along with suggested pacing guides to help you based on whether or not you're 90 minutes, 60 minutes, however it'll help you adapt for your lessons. Um, it lists all your program resources, so you will know exactly all the great features that you can use right there with the student edition content, and we pull it all together. And then, of course, you'll find AP and IV correlations like you're seeing right here in the example, because as language teachers, we don't start supporting AP and IB in level four and five. We start supporting in level one. And so it's important that uh, we plan ahead and backwards design to make sure that we are supporting students from day one to grow in these skill areas. There's also a wonderful index of cultural references. I love looking at this because it really showcases the wealth of cultural, the culture that's incorporated into the program. But it's also a handy reference tool because you may have, for example, when there are wonderful music videos, there are wonderful videos and authentic sources in this program, something you may have presented that really 
intrigue the students and you want to go back to it later and you don't want to flip through the book to find it, we go to the cultural references and you can quickly find it and uh, reference it back as you need it. So just a lot of rich, wonderful resources and wealth of information for you to use. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it back to Sh Cherie so she can talk about another great asset, which is the workbook. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the workbook. Here's a cover for the new level, uh, level three workbook. Um, so um, the workbook can, corresponds to the different sections of the student edition. It contains meaningful vocabulary and grammar activities. And at the end, there's a communication section to practice all the modes of communication. Um, the workbook, it has terrible ter um, colored sheets. They're perforated, very easy to tear out bright images, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, it's also important to know that the interactive and assignable digital versions are available to you as well. Next slide, please. So here we have a couple of examples from two different units of um, what each workbook unit starts with. Um, this is a revisit in the introductory video that the reporter presents at the beginning of the student edition. So students have an opportunity to view it again and have more activities based on it and learn more about the location or whatever the theme of the video was. Next slide, please. Here are a couple of, of uh, lexic activities. So this one is from obviously a, a food and cooking chapter. Um, so these are contextualized and you'll, you'll notice that they um, they're, have the color coding. So you always know if it's magenta, you're in a lexic section. Um, so in this case, we have a, a word puzzle. So fun and easy kind of thing. And then next on the activity at 11, we have um, la cuisine. So this is uh, the practicing the different ingredients for a recipe. And then the, finally, the activity on the right is a little more complex. And in this case, students um, practice the vocabulary in an actual recipe as they step through how to make something. Next slide, please. Okay, here we have a couple of uh, grammar workbook pages. And you'll notice that here at the, the, in the magenta, excuse me, in the teal, we have interper interpersonal structures. And on the right, we have adverbs ending in M, E, and T. These correspond to the exact titles of the grammar features. So um, when the students see those page references in the, in the student edition, these are the pages that they refer to. Um, so here we have, again, it's contextualized practice of those same concepts. Um, you'll see that action verbs are in boldface here. And so this really highlights how the progression of activities too. So first we have students underlining. Um, and then on the left here, we have transform. And you know, the, on the right, we have rewrite. And then and again, back on the left, we have uh, students uh, completing sentences. And on the right, we have answering questions. So they progress from closed-ended to two more communicative and open-ended activities. Next slide, please. Okay, here are, we're going to show you a few examples from the uh, communication section. So these are examples of some listening activities. These are both interpretive listening. Uh, they have pre-listening, first and second listening, and uh, post-listening activities. We also have interpretive reading activities. So it could be either reading or listening on the, for the interpretive mode. Next slide, please. So here we have uh, some examples of presentational speaking activities. Again, these are, are fun and I think things that students can relate to. So the one on the left, the students are, um, they're recording themselves making a dish and the one on the right, students are creating a, a podcast, giving students advice about using the internet and social media. Um, again, they're step-by-step, -step, um, walking students through doing it, the task. You have strategies here in the green boxes. We see those throughout. Um, so that's, these are very typical for presentational speaking. Next slide, please. 
So again, in the communication section, we have um, presentational writing and interpersonal writing. So we have an example of each here. Um, so the, develop, the skills are developed in really plausible real life contexts. So here we're uh, responding um, to uh, someone's questions on the right here. So there, there are things that students might do in real life. And that is it. Let me pass this back to Barbara. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. Um, yes, the workbook uh, really is a good, uh, very efficient tool. Uh, but we also have a lot of material uh, on uh, the learning platform, Clad World, um, the Clad World Languages Hub. And um, we have the assessment program with the IPAs, Evaluation des Leçons, uh, the rubrics. Then we have assessment rubrics for the projects, also self and peer assessment rubrics for the projects, then my progress charts for students. We will show these in detail. Differentiated um, worksheets, self-check quizzes on vocabulary and and grammar, um, grammar tutorials, um, and uh, pronunciation tutorials for levels one and two, not for level three because we don't do any pronunciation um, activities uh, in level three. Then uh, also plenty of other material like uh, for, for the students and glossaries, grammar tables. Um, for the teachers, the lesson plans, pacing guides, standards correlations, and um, many more uh, materials for you. Um, here you see um, an example of the differentiation worksheets. We always offer, uh, we have two options. Option A is always more scaffolded. Um, and option B is um, the way it is presented in the book with uh, space to write and um, a more challenging activity for uh, faster students or students who want to do more and can do more, uh, a, a DIFI activity. Next slide, please. Uh, then we have the assessment rubrics. They look like this, always in the colors of the student edition. And we have them, um, the assessment rubric in general and also self and peer assessment for group or individual work. Thank you. Uh, my progress is also very interesting. Um, uh, worksheet because it's sort of it sums up um, the whole unit. It's both lessons with the can do statements, the activities where they practice this um, skill, and uh, the student can self evaluate themselves. And if they want to improve, we make suggestions on what they could do to improve this skill. Thank you. And now we can see a video, um, just to one of the uh, 28 videos uh, the program offers. Elle fait son retour avec tambour et trompette. Plus que quelques heures avant la fête de la musique et derniers ajustements pour ses élèves du Conservatoire de Lyon. Le thème cette année, ça swing. Ben, ça fait deux, presque, oui, mais presque deux ans qu'ils ne sont pas produits et ce soir c'est une vraie opportunité, un vrai bonheur de pouvoir jouer ici. Bon, ils sont prêts, ils sont prêts. Donc, ça devrait bien se passer. Ça devrait bien se passer. Les spectateurs aussi sont prêts. La fête de la musique, c'est l'événement culturel qui aujourd'hui rassemble le plus de Français. La musique, l'ambiance, euh, voilà, bouger, le rythme, j'adore ça. Chaque année, on va dans le même bar, il y a un groupe qui vient chaque année. et donc euh, voilà, On connaît le groupe, on connaît la musique, donc on sait qu'on va passer une bonne soirée. 40 ans que la fête existe, 
Et pour cette occasion, 5 km de boulevard entre Lyon et Villeurbanne seront 100% piétons. C'est donner l'occasion à tous les musiciens, euh, qu'ils soient professionnels ou amateurs, euh, et surtout les amateurs, de sortir euh, leur instrument, la clarinette de Tsulli, et descendre dans, dans la rue pour jouer avec son voisin, avec sa maman, avec son grand-père. Des dizaines de concerts attendus, de tout genre. Souvent, casque sur les oreilles, les Français ont des goûts très éclectiques du classique au rap, en passant par le rock japonais. Moi j'adore ça, <rire> voilà, du coup c'est tout. J'ai besoin de, de musique qui me réveille plutôt que de trucs tout doux. Chill, électro, vous aimez Ah, c'est stylé, hein Dans la métropole de Lyon, les concerts sont prévus de 18h à minuit, en espérant que la météo ne jouera pas les troubles faits. Thank you very much for the amazing presentation for Rapporteur eh, Francophone. Uh, now let's go for the questions. So our first, our first question would be, if you could maybe explain the assessment program a bit further, and especially how does it work? Yes, I can do that. Um, the assessment program um, has uh, two kinds of assessments. Um, it has um, as a summative assessment, no, we have the formative assessment, which is the projects and also the IPA, Sherry Mitchka showed before was the strategies. And maybe we could even go back to this slide. It was, yes, this is Je prépare l'évaluation. So this is really uh, like an IPA, but uh, with help, uh, it's uh, with the strategies. We rem remind students uh, what vocabulary and grammar they could um, uh, have a look at before doing it or while doing it. And the idea is, this is why it's in the student edition, the idea is uh, to train It's students to do this IPA, always with an, um, with an authentic document, of course. And then um, in, the, um, in the hub, they have um, downloadable worksheets, also with um, always based on authentic material, and um, where they have just a normal classic IPA then uh, and that, that would be a summative assessment. We also have for each lesson, l'évaluation de leçon, where uh, they are asked to, um, students are asked to, are, are tested on what they've, it's, it's all the skills are tested. So uh, it's, um, uh, um, interpretive listening, reading, presentational speaking, uh, interpersonal speaking, and but also all the grammar and vocabulary features. And we suggest giving points, so it's a very classic summative assessment. Um, yes, uh, and that's, that's it. And then my progress is self-assessment, self And this is how it works. Is someone, yeah, uh, did I answer the question? I think it is, thank you. Uh, are students able to submit mid recording or videos for presentational speaking tasks? Yes, they can. Yes. Perfect, thank you very much. Then, Let me just double check. We have another question over here. Yes. Is the digital program a part of the teacher edition or does it need to be purchased separately? Um, uh, you have different options. Um, so you can purchase um, the teacher's uh, edition. I'll have a look how it's called. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you, you can buy it like a print edition, but you can buy it as well as a bundle edition with uh, access to, for three years to the, to, the, to the app and the digital materials. 
So there are different options for that. And probably I would suggest to, request for example, and then the SES consultants from your region will be in touch with you and give you the whole information about the different options for the digital and print versions of Hypothes Francophone. Perfect. We hope that answers the question. Then we have another question, which is if level four will prepare for AP. Uh, level four um, is not an AP program, but it will deal with AP themes and um, it will be a pre-AP program this way, yes. We um we just published level four of reporteros and it will be very similar. So it it it's a good preparation for AP, but it's not a, an AP program. Fantastic. Thank you. I would add also yeah. that um for level four, um it's not as Barbara said, it's not an AP prep program, but there are a lot of uh, activity types that mimic what students will find on the AP exam. So it is a really nice preparation. It sort of bridges the gap between a regular program and an AP, strictly AP program. Yes, thank you. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Then could you please repeat all the different levels covered by each level of Reporter Francophone in general, like the first book, which uh, levels it covers and so on. Sure. So uh, Reporter Francophone 1 is novice low to novice high. Then level two is novice high to intermediate low. Level three is intermediate low to intermediate mid and a reporter from Kofon 4 will be intermediate mid to intermediate high. We will also share with you this uh, presentation so you can see that. Um, I hope you. Does this answer your question? I think it does. Thank you. And yes, we, we, we want to remind you all that we will share the slides and you can always review this information. Then moving to the next question, maybe Priscilla could help us out with this. Um, how would you suggest, in general, to use the teacher edition to implement the program? Um, I would use the teacher's edition as a starting point. So, you know, you would, at the beginning, I think if you're doing your high-level planning, use your scope and sequence, your pacing guide, and your unit guide, and you will work with, you know, the six unit program is really great for to suit a lot of different grading periods. And then within each lesson there, which in the, within each unit, there are two major lessons and then the, the rest of the instructional features. So I would start at that kind of high level planning just to see how the program is going to adapt over your instructional year and then start using the features on the side wraps, you know, those more specific content suggestions to really kind of plan your instructional sequence for like your specific lesson plans. Um, if you have that high level planning done and you know where you're going, then you can backwards map too. So look at that IPA immediately. So you will know at the end of the unit where the students are going to be. And so, and you will see how all the instructional pieces fit to get your students ready for that IPA. And you'll see how the pieces build. So as you do a unit, you know, once you decide the number of units that you're gonna be incorporated within your grading cycle, go to that IPA, backwards design, use that information in the wrap and then sequence your instruction that way. Fantastic, thank you very much. Then we have two more questions to go. Please, everyone remember, if you have any questions that come up, you still have time to pose them. Our next question would be if the accents present in Reporter Francophone are authentic. Yes, they are. They absolutely are. Also, um, I mean, um, because the reporter are from the, um, they are from that region, so they are speaking the way they speak. 
And also we have plenty of uh, authentic uh, videos, as you have noticed now in this video we just listened to. Um, and uh, yes, I think this is one of the very important uh, features of Reporter Francophone. Um, it's very important to cover any kind of French accent because there's um, a big variety of French accents. Uh, I mean, French is not French. <laughs> and then it's so also uh, as uh, to the audio, uh, the the audio recordings we do, um, I mean, with a reporter and, and also with other young people, they have their accent. And this is very important for us that it is like this. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And moving on to what seems to be the last question, uh, should we complete the whole content on the programs or can we just pick segments? What would you, what would you say? Sorry, uh, could you uh, repeat the question? Of course. Should we complete the whole content on the program? Mm, well... I think there are parts that can be skipped. And in fact, what we wanted to do was to uh, work out a um, critical learning path so that we can see um, what is really important to be covered and which parts maybe could be skipped in case of necessity. This is a, uh, something we want to um, offer in, uh, in the very near future. We don't have it yet, but we're working on it. We started to work on it for our Spanish program and we're going to do it for the French program as well. Uh, we think it's very, very useful for teachers to know how to deal with time uh, problems. <laughs> so, I hope this answered the question. Yes, I think it does. Thank you. And that seemed to be the last question. So again, uh, thank you very much. Before we finish, I would like to remind everyone, um, mention the CLEP World Language Learning Community. Uh, this is These are the many options we have. Just so you know, we have complementary onboarding. This includes platform training in case you already adopted one of our materials. And we also have initial content implementation once you adopt them. We are there for you. We want to help you and make your, the process as easy as it can be for you. We also have many free webinars of this one and many others that you can check on our website. We also have training sessions. Uh, as some of you may know, we are also present in conferences and events. In case you visit any of them, check our website and we would love to see you there. And of course, we have the opportunities for continuing professional development. We invite you to visit cledwl.com-pd to learn more about our Taylor PD for schools and district overall. So please visit the website. Again, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. And please, if you have any additional questions that come up that you would like to ask any of the presenters or us, please send us an email at marketing at cletwl.com and we will be glad to help you. That being said, again, thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara, Cherry, Priscilla. Thank you for the presentation and thank you everyone for the attention. I hope you have a great rest of the evening. <laughs>